So someone called me today with a comment about this particular passage in the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, and I was quite interested in our conversation that ensued about it. So I thought that I would share it with you. Uh, Narendra, who becomes Swami Vivekananda later on in the book, uh, is talking with M. At the time, uh, Narendra is about 19, and I think M is like 28, and he's a, uh, a principal of a school. And so this conversation happens. Narendra to M, how do you find the, the young men these days? M, oh, they're not bad, but they don't seem to receive any religious instruction. Narendra, ah, but from my experience, I feel like they're going to the dogs. They smoke cigarettes, they indulge in frivolous talk. They enjoy foppishness, play truant, and do everything of that sort. I've even seen some of them visiting questionable places. M responds, I didn't notice such things in our student days. Narendra, well, perhaps you didn't mix with the students all that intimately. I've seen them talking with people of immoral character. Perhaps they are on terms of intimacy with them even. M, it is strange indeed. Narendra, I know that many of them form bad habits. It would be proper if the guardians of the boys and the authorities kept their eyes on these matters. They were talking thus when Sri Ramakrishna came to them and asked with a smile, Well, what are you talking about? Narendra, I've been asking M about the boys in the schools. The conduct of students nowadays isn't as it should be. The master became very grave and said to M rather seriously, This kind of conversation is not good. It isn't desirable to indulge in any talk that isn't of God. You are their senior, and you are intelligent. You should not have encouraged them to talk about such matters. You know, the question that was asked was, well, why, why was Sri Ramakrishna so displeased with that conversation? And it's like this. First of all, they're gossiping. Uh, you know, no, no religious text uh, likes, likes people to indulge in gossip. It's very unhealthy for ourselves. But in this con context, it's quite unhealthy because it goes back to that teaching that a baby knows no thief. The idea that we don't see in others what doesn't exist in ourselves. And so M and Narendra sitting there speaking very negatively about uh, these boys in a generalized kind of way are reinforcing or running energy through those negative ideas, those the, the, the thief that exists within themselves. They're giving it energy, giving it thought, and projecting it out on these others. It's an ego situation. You know, any time that there's, that there's particularization or, or division into categories or, you know, making blanket statements like that, you can know that the ego is behind it. Any time there's division going on, the ego is responsible for that. And we know that the ego is eternally... Uh, uh, insecure, because it doesn't have a real existence. It's kind of a chemical reaction of what happens when the infinite uh, merges or touches the finite, you know, in a dream, that it, it's able to easily take that on, on that identity. But it remains insecure because that knowledge of its non-existence is always there. And uh, the universal self in its, its non-particular state doesn't feed that delusion and so when the ego sees other, uh, there's fear there. And that, that itches, that insecurity. And so it wants to build up itself. And one of the ways, unfortunately, that it does that is by looking down on others. And, you know, and religion is rife with that danger. You know, so you, you, as you go along in spiritual life, you may become a, a much nicer person, a much more disciplined person, a much kinder person. And when you start recognizing yourself as such, start holding on to those identities instead of sloughing off these identities of particularization, you start owning them. You become a church lady, like on Saturday Night Live. You become one of these smug, self-righteous people that goes around talking about how the new generation has gone to the dogs. It's an ignorant conversation. It doesn't build up. Love always builds up. Love always encourages, always hopes, always believes. Love never fails. 
all of those characteristics of the divine. So when you speak of others and when you speak about the condition of the world, Thakur says you should speak only of God. Now, what does that mean? God is an ideal. So we talk about ideals. We talk about the highest in each other. We look for the best in each other and in our society at large. And we always are looking for the opportunity to reinforce that goodness, to encourage that goodness, to fan those flames of goodness all around us and everyone. So that when we see a positive thing, we make sure that we reward it. We make sure that it's mentioned. We make sure that we keep our eyes on the ideal always until all of us are living it.